Hi, my name is Brett Johnson. I'm a systems engineer at Tech Data supporting Veritas Technologies. In this demo, I'm going to discuss Backup Exec 16 and instant recovery for Hyper-V virtual machines. Before we jump into instant recovery for Hyper-V, I want to note that Backup Exec 16 was released on November 7th, 2016, and is the first major release of Backup Exec under Veritas since the split from Symantec. While instant recovery was actually released under Backup Exec 15 Feature Pack 5 just months prior to the release of Backup Exec 16, Instant Recovery now supports Windows 2016 as well as the latest version of VMware. Other main features to Backup Exec 16 include the Veritas rebranding of the GUI, which you're looking at here. Uh, Azure Cloud support has been added to the Backup Exec Cloud Connector, allowing you to backup and restore directly to and from Azure Cloud Storage. For more information on the Azure integration, please take a look at our Backup Exec 16 and Azure video. And again, full support for Windows uh, Server 2016, including the latest versions of Exchange SQL and SharePoint. Getting back to instant recovery for Hyper-V. Now, instant recovery can be very beneficial to critical virtual workloads. Right? The whole idea around instant recovery is the ability to power on and access a virtual machine that has gone down for whatever reason in the shortest time possible before a normal restore would have time you know, to take place, thus greatly minimizing downtime. Now the way instant recovery works is the backup storage where the virtual machine has been backed up to is actually mounted as an NFS share to the Hyper-V host. The backup exec server must have the server for NFS role installed and running. When the Hyper-V host has access to this NFS share, it can then boot up the virtual machine and the VM functions and users can access it as normal. While the VM is running, you can take advantage of storage migration in, in Hyper-V to move the storage from, of the virtual machine from the backup storage to the primary Hyper-V storage and have zero downtime during this process. Once a virtual machine has been migrated, you can then end the instant recovery process within backup exec and life of that virtual machine is back to normal living on the Hyper-V host. So to set the stage for this demo, I have my Backup Exec 16 server, and I've already previously backed up a virtual machine, which is named IR01. If I move over to my Hyper-V host, uh, which you see here is running server 2016, when I open the Hyper-V manager, you'll see I have one virtual machine running, uh, the same IR01 that was previously backed up. I'm going to power down this virtual machine to show that the VM is no longer in a running state, uh, you know, to sort of simulate a down VM. And now that the virtual machine is off, I can go back to my backup exec server to start the instant recovery process. So to start the instant recovery process, we highlight the virtual machine, IR01, and click the Instantly Recover Our VM button. So when the wizard opens, uh, you'll see the options here. We can rename the job to whatever we'd like. In this case, we're going to leave it as default. Uh, we then select which backup set we want to use. Uh, you may have backed up the virtual machine multiple times, so we need to select which um, backup we want to use. You can search within a time frame and then use the drop down to make the selection. Uh, you'll notice the caveat here that backup to disk is the only supported storage location for instant recovery to function. So please keep this in mind when setting up backup jobs. Uh, next we select the destination tab. On this screen we can rename the virtual machine. We're going to leave it as default. Uh, we select which Hyper-V host we want the machine to run on. In this case, we've already done so, as well as the server logon account. And then we need to browse uh, the destination for virtual machine registration and checkpoints. To do this, we select Browse. It connects to our Hyper-V host. We select our D drive, and we select our virtual hard disk folder. And we click OK. We can also check the box to automatically power on the virtual machine as part of the instant recovery process. Check that box. And you'll see uh, the note here that networking for the virtual machine will be disabled. Now there may be cases where you want to utilize instant recovery on a virtual machine that might be functioning properly. Uh, for example, if you wanted to test an update or a patch. 
Uh, this can be done on the uh, instant recovery, uh, instant recovered virtual machine without affecting anything on the production network. Uh, networking can be very easily enabled should this be, you know, a true uh, uh, restore scenario. Next, we select our schedule tab. Here we can either select a, a certain uh, day and time for this particular job to run, or in this case, we want to run now. And then finally, we select our notification tab if we want to set up notification recipients when the instant recovery job completes. Uh, finally, we click OK. Click OK again. And you'll see here that the uh, job is running within Backup Exec. And when I switch back over to my Hyper-V host, uh, you'll see that virtual machine being added and powered on here in a moment. There it is. And again, uh, networking is disabled, so if you do want to uh, turn networking on, simply select the virtual machine select settings, select network adapter, and from the drop down select which virtual switch you want to connect to and any other networking uh, settings that may be applicable. So at this point the virtual machine has booted up and is functioning as normal. Now if this was a true recovery event uh, we can now utilize storage migration to move the storage of the running virtual machine back to the uh, uh, normal Hyper-V storage. And we can see within Backup Exec by the green arrow icon that the VM is currently in instant recovery mode. Once we no longer need the instant recovery VM, we can end the process by clicking the Remove a Recovered VM button select use defaults and remove now select the virtual machine select OK and finally confirm yes and that's it that's how easy it is in a DR scenario to get a downed virtual machine back up and functioning a lot quicker than a normal virtual machine restore hope you found this information useful if you have any questions please contact the Veritas team at TechData